Hey y'all, Jess here. Welcome back. If this is your first time, thanks for stopping in and welcome to the channel. So I recently acquired this older gooseneck trailer and I discovered that some of the seals and the brakes needed work. And so I've been working on that as you can tell behind me, but also I've been working on the lighting and uh, the trailer wiring in general. And so that's what I'm gonna make this video about is how to create really good connections for your trailer wiring, how to put them together. That'll provide uh, years of trouble free service. So hopefully you can get something out of this video that you can apply to your own trailers. This isn't meant to be a, uh, a trailer wiring tutorial in general as far as the diagram, so what wire to connect where and things like that. It's more to do with uh, the mechanical connections of that wire and how to make those the strongest and uh, trouble free as possible. And also the methods that I use to do that. Now, uh, probably three or four main methods, but there a couple of these methods have uh, several different variations. So there's, a, there's quite a bit here. Um, but I think you'll get something from it, or at least I hope you will get something from it and you can take this back and apply it to your own trailers. So let me show you what I got. Let's dive in. All right. So the, uh, first thing I want to go over is what not to use. And, uh, these seem to be the number one thing that I'm always cutting off and redoing. And these are the, uh, quick connects or quick splices, automotive splices, whatever you want to call them. There's several different names that people call them. I don't know. I know it's hard to see. See if I can get close enough for this GoPro, but there's little metal tabs in here that actually cut into your wire, into your insulation to make contact with your uh, conductor in there. And uh, any anytime I've ever took taking these off there's just so much dirt and grime in there they get moisture in them and these contacts uh like i said cut into your insulation and so they're corroding they're getting water and dirt into that connection and for the long term it's just not going to last so i cut these off and i do a much better connection and i'll i'll get to those types of connections here in just a second i just wanted to show you what I don't like to use and what I'm always replacing. So these are convenient, they're quick. And maybe for something inside, like inside a cab, it may be okay, but underneath the trailer, nah, don't do it. But like I said, I'm working on this trailer, putting new brakes on. So I will, uh, I'll be redoing these connections and I'll show you that uh, here shortly. Okay, here's a here's a little connection I'm about to do. I'm gonna only show you uh, in the process. And uh, what it is is somebody had re actually rewired this trailer, and they ran this actually a pretty good, decent uh, quality cable multi conductor all the way to the back to the back tail lights. So the left turn, right turn uh, tails brakes all that works on the back but this trailer also has side lights well they didn't tie into those at all so that's actually what i'm doing here so what it is is i, I split this cable open and I, I found what wire they were using for these side lights which actually be running lights uh or tail lights it's gonna be the same circuit And so then I stripped that back a little bit. And so I've got these wires that were already existing that I'm going to uh, tie on to that wire that they're using. And I'm gonna solder this connection. Now, as you can see, one of my methods I like to use is heat shrink with solder, but it would be really hard to, uh, to get heat shrink on here unless I was doing all of these wires, unless I had them all cut. I was putting them all together. Not only that, um, I've got these two different wires, 10 off of this wire. And so there's really no way to uh, get heat shrink on all of these wires at one time. So what I like to use in situations like this is liquid tape. And so I'll put a couple of coats of liquid tape on here and then I'll come back and I'll either, I may coat this whole thing to get all the rest of these uh, insulated, which I mean, they have insulation on the internal wires, but just for a little extra protection, I may I may 
put a coat of this on there and then come back and put actual electrical tape on it. Just for, like I said, extra, extra protection to keep, you know, sit, rubbing situations and things like that. But So, uh, this I'm going to go ahead and do this connection. Now, yeah, you can see up here the dreaded uh, or the evil quick splice, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to leave those on there for now just because these are side lights. But uh, I am going to come back and take these off eventually and solder in these connections here. And I'll probably... Uh, I'll either heat shrink these or I'll do the uh, the butt splice heat shrink connectors. I hadn't decided yet. Uh, being as this is kind of a tight spot, I can probably get some crimpers in here, but uh, I may just go ahead and solder them and heat shrink them just because because uh, I know that's a good connection. All right, well, I got that soldered. I got one coat of the liquid tape on here. I'm probably going to do two coats at least on that soldered connection that I just done. And uh, I have to give it about 10 minutes, and then I can come back and put another coat on there. If you're wondering the soldering gun that I'm using, I've got a couple. Uh, for the heavier duty type stuff, I like this one. Uh, it heats up really quick. It's the, uh, the 650. Uh, you'll see some 500s and 550s. I think 550 is the model now. And it works pretty good. It's just a little bit lower wattage. This is the 300-200 uh, watt. And like I said, it gets hot pretty quick. I also have a butane torch. And uh, actually one of the videos I'm going to do here, I'm going to use it on some of the smaller wire. And also on some of the heat shrink. I like to use that butane on the heat shrink. And then also another type of connector uh, that you may have seen or may not have seen that's pretty new uh, and pretty cool little concept. But uh, we'll get to that here in a minute. Anyhow, that's uh, just wanted to show you that how you know I've got four different wires or or two wires ten into this one wire here. So I want to show you how to insulate that because that can be a little bit of a challenge. Not as not as easy to heat shrink that one. So I like to use liquid tape. It's a good option. And then, like I said, I'll come back and add some over top of that. Probably uh, just regular electric tape.
All right, so it just so happens uh, doing this trailer video, and this is uh, my feed trailer here, and it's not very old, a couple years old. Uh, part of the background, background noise, I got the truck running because I was checking these lights. Actually, I, just, I walked around and this one was glowing real dim. See that? So every time you hit a bump, the thing's just gonna go on and off, on and off, on and off. Actually, it was dim and I, I tapped it like that and it come on. So let me uh, open this up and see what we got here. They should just pop out. So this one, I don't know where it's uh, spliced at. But odds are this one just has a bad or loose connection right here. So there's no splices in here, which I wish there was. Because that makes troubleshooting these things a lot easier. I'll show you what I mean. No splices in here. So odds are it's down in this uh, black wire loom, which sucks. Hopefully that was just a loose connection. So I'll stick it back on and, and we may get lucky on this one. I was honestly expecting to find one of those uh, quick connects. Still something going on there because uh, it's a little better than it was. But there's something still loose down in that wiring, I think, where that splice is. I'll have to try to find that splice. I'm guessing it's gonna be right here. Anyway, now that I know that's, uh, oh, hey. Here's the issue. Uh, let's see if you can see this. This right here is a ground wire for that light. And uh, it's loose. This nut right here isn't tightened all the way down onto that. That should be tight. So I'll, uh, I'll have to find me a wrench and try to tighten that. Really, the thing to do on this would be to put a nut behind this little uh, wire loop, this wire keeper, put a nut just on the ground screw itself, and then come back and put this nut on to hold this wire uh, keeper on. So yeah, that's the problem on that one. Let's see here. So yeah, so I'm, wigg I'm wiggling that uh, ground wire. So that's usually the other issue on your wiring. Uh, always check your grounds first curious if this other side the same way and it is Did you see that loose down there there's a the ground that is crazy why would they do that I don't know anyway I know what the fix is anyway it's easy enough so just uh Thought that was interesting. Perfect timing. So uh, I'll get back to showing you the uh, other connections I like to do. While we're on the topic of trailer wiring, um, in the typical, this here is done kind of the typical way, just the regular style of your butt splice connectors. And those work. Um, I've used them a lot in the past as well. I uh, still use them a lot at my work. But um, these are uh, pretty much protected inside this pipe here, the way they got this. So these will last a pretty good while, but, and right now these aren't giving me any problems. Um, and this was like this when I bought the trailer, but at some point I'll probably have to come back and, you know, redo these. But for now it's good. Just wanted to show you the regular style uh, butt connectors. Certainly an option, but there are better, uh, better methods. 
Okay, so uh, similar to the uh, the butt supply style connections that I showed uh, just a second ago, I'm adding one thing to this connection that's really going to help it, and that is the heat shrink tubing. Now, obviously, you need the uh, heat shrink tubing size to be able to go over your butt splice connector. And uh, also, as you'll see here, I start to add some uh, dielectric grease. And this is just something I like to do uh, to help protect those wires and the connection in general from corrosion. Uh, dielectric grease doesn't actually have any conductive properties. Uh, it's actually an insulator, but uh, the crimp action uh, when you smash that connector down on that wire will displace the dielectric grease and actually provide a good connection. But you'll have that grease in there and uh, probably not necessarily needed on the heat shrink method uh, but just an extra layer of protection just in case. <clears throat> Showing the grease there. And, uh, get the heat shrink into position. Now, I will say all the heat shrink I like to use uh, specifically on the trailers uh, just because they have the potential to be exposed to moisture and uh, chemicals, things like that. I like to use a dual wall or a uh, the heat shrink that has the hot melt adhesive inside of it and you'll see that here a little bit later here's another method that is kind of the butt splice connector and heat shrink all in one and these I think are actually called heat shrink butt connectors so you can see the clear gel squished out there that is actually the hot melt adhesive that's inside there and uh, that's going to give you some good good weatherproofing properties and I like those just because it's like I said it's all in one it's quick and easy and here's another solder connection here and, uh, this one my wire for the side light was a little too short so I'm adding on a little extension and I soldered both of those connections and a little tip there, you can see the alligator clip holding the heat shrink up out of the way to keep it away from the heat until you're ready for it. And the heat shrink actually covered both solder joints on this. And you can see, kind of see that hot metal adhesive begin to melt out the ends there. Now here is the newer style connection I was talking about. I've been starting to kind of see these advertised quite a bit and uh, decided I'd give them a try. So I've been trying them out here lately. And these are called solder seal connectors. I just bought an assortment off of Amazon. Uh, pretty similar to a regular solder joint. Uh, and yeah, you, you want to make sure you have good clean wire. I like to twist them together to make a good mechanical mechanical connection. And you slide that band of solder over your wires. And for these connectors, I like to use a butane torch just because I'm able to pinpoint that heat right on that band of solder where I need it. And then as that solder begins to melt and flow, then uh, I'll move out to the edges and go ahead and finish shrinking that tube around the wires. Now I will say that uh, well, I do think these provide a pretty good connection uh, from what testing I've done. The solder doesn't actually flow in between individual strands of wire like you'd get with a regular solder connection. And that's simply because you're just not getting enough heat in the middle of those wires to pull that solder in. 
and uh, allow it to melt. So really what happens is this, this solder just flows around the outside of your wires. But again, I find that it really still makes a good connection. That's uh, a good solid connection. And uh, I found it to be a low resistance connection, which is what we're looking for. And still, it's a much better connection in my opinion than the uh, quick splice connectors that I showed earlier that I've become, that I've come to despise. So yeah, just using the butane torch there, like I said, uh, concentrating that heat on the uh, solder connection. You can, if you really pay close attention, you can see that solder begin to melt and flow. You can see it kind of take on a shiny appearance as it covers those wires. Now these connections I don't think are quite as, they don't have the same hot melt adhesive in them that the heat shrink tubing does. But those colored bands on the outside do provide uh, a good tight seal around that wire. I normally wouldn't use this type of connection on brakes. So I like to solder those wires, but I'm gonna try these solder seal connectors out and see how they do. So that's it. Um, hopefully you got something out of this video. Uh, any questions, let me know. I'll do what I can to answer them. Uh, be sure to like, subscribe, leave me a comment below, uh, just let me know what you think, and uh, as always, God bless, and we'll see you on the next one.